Okay, the things you need for etching. One, you need a tank. This was a homemade one. It has air agitation, which is simply a silicone hose with a series of poles drilled into it the bottom and glued in to silicone. You need an air pump, which is nothing more than a fish tank air pump. And a heater. This is a fish tank heater also. Of course you need ferrochloride. I use ferrochloride. There's other methods that you can use. I like the ferrochloride. It seems to be the safest out of all of them. And some way to monitor the temperature of your etchant. I use a little laser gun, but you can use a fish tank thermometer as long as it goes up to around 120 degrees. You need a way to hang your board into the etching. I use an old plastic coat hanger that's cut into short sections and garbage bag ties. And a bucket of warm water and a mess of paper towels. It's going to get messy sometimes. And of course, the boards you're going to edge. Okay, we've gotten set up, had the air pump hooked up, filled up with fire chloride, had the heater in. You want to go to etch your board, you need to drill some holes to suspend it with. I use 16 holes, I put them in inconspicuous spots. This one I have a large border, so I just put them around the edge. If you don't have a border, you can put them in spots, say like underneath RJ45 jacks is a good spot. And, uh, Throw a tie on here. The thing about the ties, make sure they're not tight in the hole because then the chloride won't get inside and etch that spot. So you want to make sure you have a have a loop in there to where it's loose. We'll gauge about where the board needs to be inside our tank. And that's where we'll tie it off at. That's ready. A note on tanks, you don't have to have an actual etching tank. You can use Tupperware containers, anything plastic that your board will fit in is fine. Just be careful with the heater that you don't melt anything. Um, right now we're waiting for the ferric chloride to get up to about 120 degrees. So anywhere between 115 and 120 is what I go with. We're only at 90 right now. Okay. Our etching is at 115 degrees. We're ready to go. And the holes in here were set. Just put her down inside. Cover it up. The bubbles tend to make a mess. That's why we have the paper towels everywhere. Kind of cover it up here. Try to keep some of the mess down. Now it's just babysitting. It's going to take about eight to nine minutes. We'll check it, see where it's at. With air agitation, you'll notice when you do a board that there'll be hot spots. Some spots will be etched more than others. That's why we drill more than one hole in our, in our board so that we can rotate the board inside the tank. A little bit about the safety. You want to have some uh, rubber gloves safety glasses, you definitely don't want this stuff in your eyes. Alright, it's been about eight minutes. I'm going to check, see where we're at. Alright. You can see the center of its edge, and that's our little hot spot I was speaking of edges are etching a little bit and the copper has really changed the colors. Now we want to try to check it a little bit more often. But once it starts to cut through like this and gets to the board it'll etch it. The etching goes a lot faster. So right now 
I'm just going to take and turn the board around, cut down on that hot spot, put it back in here, and we'll check it again here in a couple minutes. All right, a couple minutes later, see where we're at. The back of the board is nearly done, and the front, the center of it's etched, so we'll just kind of hold it down in there a little bit. A little more acid than I could have just dropped it in here vertically to save on this. Right. Excess, a quick visual, we'll look and see where we're at. So we'll put it down in the water. This will neutralize the acid for right now. Kind of wash it off gently. Now we'll do a visual, check it, make sure all of our holes have been etched out on the insides. All the traces, we'll check in between those, make sure there's no copper left. Also want to check the back, you want to make sure the back's clean, you don't want no components shorting out on the top of the board. This one looks finished, so we'll go with it. Just dry it off. Move our tie. And we'll take it in and we'll rinse it in some fresh water. Then remove the edge resist with brake cleaner, lacquer thinner, acetone, any, anything like that. And then drill it. And we can assemble it. And that's how to edge a board.